Hello and welcome to a new episode of Laravel Core Adventures, where we take pieces of our favorite PHP framework and together figure out how they work in the background. This is level three of the Laravel request lifecycle. So let's dive right in. In level number two, we took a look at the HTTP kernel class, and we have seen how the application gets bootstrapped as well as how middlewares come into play. The only thing missing right now is to check out how the correct route is found and run. This is what we want to do today. But let's start with a little recap to see where we left off in the last videos. In the index.php file, the kernel's handle method is run, which can be found down here. Okay, perfect. So let's go into the kernel class. This is the one in our application, but we are looking for this one here. And here we can look for the handle method. Okay, perfect. Then we send the request through the router. And then down here is another dispatch to router method after the middlewares have been applied. And here we are finally running a dispatch method on the router class. So if I go into this method here, you can see that I'm now in the router class. And then we are calling another dispatch to route method. And here finally some important things are happening. First, we're going to find the route with this method here, and then we're going to run this route. Okay, so first let's start with finding the route. Of course, we're going to need to request as a parameter here, because the request defines what route we are looking for. We want to match the correct route and therefore we're going to run this match method here, which can be found in the route collection class. So this is where I am right now. In there, we see that we can find routes with the same HTTP method. That's what's done here. Let's dump this out to see what we get here. Lucky us, because we found two routes with the same HTTP work. So the first one is for API user endpoint, and the second one is the one that we are looking for, for the main endpoint of the application. Great, what's next? Now we need, of course, find the correct route, because we only need one of them. Okay, and this is being done in the matched against routes method. In there, we now separate the fallbacks route from the other ones. I'm pretty sure you know that we can um, set up fallbacks route in Laravel. It looks like this. So if no other routes are being matched, we can use this fallback route. Okay, and we need to separate them here because then we're going to merge them again. And now we have the fallbacks route at the end. And this is important because we return the first route that has been matched. This is why we need to put the fallbacks at the end of the collection. And then as mentioned, we are finding the first one here that matches and we're returning that back. And in order to see if we have the correct route, we are going to run now the matches method on the route instance. So let's check out this class. You can find it on the routing route. And here we have the matches method. In there, the route is being compiled to a Symfony compiled route instance first. But more interesting to us are those validators here. Okay, so what are they? Let's dump them out again. So these validator classes are now checking the UI, the method, the scheme, and the host of the request. And only if all of them are passing, then we get our correct route. And that's what's done here. We're looping for each of these validators and we check if the validator matches. And at the end, we find our correct route, hopefully. All right, so at this point here, we have now our correct route. Let's just make sure that I'm not telling any bullshit. And here you can see that this is now the route that we've been looking for. Okay, so this was working. 
So if we find the correct route, we're returning it here back. But if we don't find one, then we're going to throw some exceptions. And there are two different ones. The first one we're getting if there is an alternative verb for the request. So let's say we change our route to post. So this means we're now listening for a post request. Then we get a method not allowed HTTP exception. So this means the endpoint is given, but the HTTP verb is wrong. I'm sure you've seen this before. So this is what's been thrown here. If there's no alternative verb, then we're going to throw an not found HTTP exception. So this is quite interesting to know because I'm sure you've seen both of these exceptions before. All right, now back to our dispatch to route method. We now have the route. The second step here is to actually run it. That's what's done here. Now we set this newly found route on the request class through the set route resolver. This means later through the request, we can get the route through this get route method. Then we are dispatching the route match event. So now that we have our correct route and we run the route within the stack. That's what's done here. And I'm pretty sure this looks familiar to you. Again, we have a pipeline here, but this time we run the request through the route middlewares, which are these from the kernel class. So first we've been running the global ones and now we're running these route middlewares. And again, before we're checking if we should skip these middlewares or not. So after the request went through all the route middlewares, we're going to run the route before we prepare the response. This is now where we check if the route has a controller action or is a callable. In our case, we have a callable, which is the function that we return. And in this function, we return our view object. So that's this here. So if we dump out this, we should get our view object back. Let's try this out. And perfect, here we have it. So this is being returned from our route. If we would connect our route to a controller, then this run controller method is being run here. And here we're going to return what's being returned from the controller that you're using. Okay, but back to our case here, we run the callable method and we get returned the view object. But this object is nothing that we can send to the browser back because the browser has no idea about this object. So this is why we need to prepare this response. And that's what's being handled here in the run route with stack method after we have run the route. So now we're going to repair it. And this is done in this to response method now on the router class. Okay, so what's happening here? In our case, this line would be run with our view object as a parameter to create this response object. And again, let's see how this looks like. We actually have seen this before in the other videos. Here we can now see that this response object has turned our view object into this string here. And this is something that we could send later back to the browser and that the browser understands. But also interesting here, for example, is this one here. So here we check if the instance of the response is a model and if it was recently created, because then we return a 201 status code, because that's what we return when we have created something with this request. So that's also good to know that this is happening here. And this code is also responsible for returning arrays or object into JSON responses, which are quite nice to read when you look at them in the browser. So for example, if we change this here to returning just an array like this. And now Laravel is returning this array as a JSON response, which is quite nice to read in the browser, like you can see here. 
And from here, this new response now is being returned through the router class, through the HTTP kernel, back to the index.php file. And it's the same response that we see here. This is now also the response that we sent back to the browser, but I've already shown this to you in the last videos. All right, so this was level number three of the Laravel request lifecycle. I hope I could help you to better understand what is happening behind every single request that hits your application and how Laravel finds the correct route. It is not just nice to know about the code running in the back, it will also help you to understand better how Laravel is working. And this is also super helpful for debugging. Okay, this was it for this video. Stay tuned. See you.